teach undergraduate students about plants and I get to share my passion with plants with them, which is a lot of fun. And that's why I get to come here and talk to you guys as well about zoo garden plants. Um, I look at things a little bit differently. Um, so I've seen some of you before. You've seen maybe some of my talks before. No, I have a slightly different perspective. Um, but uh, several years ago, I wrote a publication called The Zoo Garden. And, um, and it's really a way to kind of remind us that, you know, we're connected to animals even when we garden with plants. Because there's a lot of plants that are named after animals or get those common names from animals. Um, the Zoo Garden publication, which I'll hand out to you later because I think we're going to do a tour and you can act like kids and check off the ones that they have in the publication. Um, but uh, in that publication, it was written for kids um, or really focused on um, parents and kids so that you can create your own zoo garden um, at home as well. So today, in the 30 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever that I have, I wanted to share some of those plant um, ideas with you as well and show off some of the plants that they have here. And it's amazing all of the plants that um, they have and how well they're taken here, taken care of here at the zoo garden um, in Muscatine. I um, brought some to start off with from my garden because I didn't want to um, hog things from everywhere else. And is it okay if I'm here? Is this too mm -hmm. okay? Uh, too close to you guys. Um, and I'll pass some of these plants around. I also have a, a few pictures on a PowerPoint as well because sometimes it's hard to figure out how these plants were named when they were named after a s different part of the season than uh, maybe right now. Um, I'll start with something I know you all know. Uh, this is one of the favorites. Let's see if I can pull this out. I've got a couple things in here. I think I know what you're pulling uh -huh. out. It's in the <laughs> reptile garden, Sarah and Jane. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so this one, um, so when I told my 11 year old that I was bringing and talking about plants like lamb's ear, um, he said, here mom, take the little lamb. Oh, yeah. Lamb's ear a lot in some of my classes um, because I teach a herbaceous ornamental class where students have to ID um, 200 different herbaceous ornamentals. And it's very overwhelming and it's a lot of memorization. And then two or three weeks in, we, we pet the lamb's ear because it's, it's a nice calming thing to do. Um, and then we talk about um, the, the name is Stachys Byzantina. And we just kind of repeat that like a mantra while we're, we're petting uh, the lamb's ear. And that's one that they usually don't forget because of it. How many of you have lamb's ear in your garden? So, yep, and lamb's ear is a great one to have. Kind of a brown cover, edger, likes it hot, likes it dry. Any problems with the lamb's ear this year? Because it's been so wet? Slow coming up. Yeah, slow coming up. Everything was a little Everything slow. Is. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you'll see problems with it when they're really wet spring or wet winter um, but if it's fairly well established you can it's a good reliable one so um, and I'm sure I've seen it in your garden as well a um, couple of others I think you probably know uh, this one let's go to this one because it's blooming right now oops so you tell me what is this one butterfly, butterfly weed butterfly weed why is it called butterfly weed? Because they like it. <laughs> they love it. It's like a magnet. So usually orange. There's also yellow. There's some that are a little more red. Um, kind of fuzzy leaves. Uh, this is a not a very big plant, but it's usually loaded in July uh, with flowers and often covered in butterflies. So a good one to have. Um, this is one I tell people that it's one of those that you don't give it too much attention or care uh, in your garden. It really likes infertile soils. So very infertile soils. Don't dig it up and move it and put it in a really fertile place and fertilize it a lot. That's like the fastest way you can kill it. 
So little water, little fertilizer. Um, this year, mine didn't come up until the first week of June, first or second week of June, but it's big and blooming now. So it likes it when it gets hot. So a good one to consider. Um, let's see. What else do we have in here? Oh, I guess we could start with, hmm, let's do this one. Do you know what this one is? Goat's beard? It is goat's beard. Good job. Very <laughs> good job. It's already done. It, it bloomed in June. Um, it's got big uh, leaves. How many of you have ever had goats before? A few of you? <laughs> so when I told my son that goats have beards, he was not, he didn't believe me. Did you, <laughs> do you believe me? You have to know that you have goats, that they do have beards. And this is one where they often, um, Just going to show you what that looks like that they have because they don't have a mustache they don't have anything else it's just that bit of a, a beard there so um, yeah a little bit like a goatee right so um, and it's very loose and this is what the flower on this one looks like it usually starts kind of up and then ends up a little bit of a hanging type flower um, isn't I've, that more of a to the back of the garden, it gets kind of tall. Doesn't yeah, it? it can. So goat's beard can easily get um, six feet Ooh. tall. <laughs> so um, there are some dwarf types, uh -huh. um, but yeah, this one uh, can get quite quite large. I tell people this is one too that likes some shade. So put it in the part shade situation and plan on where you're putting it to leave it. It's also one that's really resistant to moving. Um, try and dig it up and move it, and it generally doesn't do very well. It doesn't like that transplanting. And digging up and dividing it and moving it usually requires an axe or heavy equipment. It's got such a deep, fibrous root system, deep, big roots, that it requires plant it and leave it. And know that you probably never have to divide it again. So, so that's a nice low-maintenance thing. So it's not one that's... Some perennials we treat like furniture. We can move them around and divide them. This is one that's a permanent placement. Okay. Can you tell us the name one more time? It's called goat's beard. Goat's beard or Runcus dioecus. Okay. Goat's beard. <laughs> Runcus dioecus. Does it get a flower on it? It does. Here's the flower, and I'll let kind of pass that back if you want. On oh, that one, oh, so this it's, really is the flower just dried up. Yeah, this is the flower dried up. So usually happens sometime in June. Um, this one happens in later June than normal, but yeah. So yeah, you're welcome. So there we go. Okay, so other things. Um, this one we'll do next that I got here. Ah. My son is really into reptiles and amphibians, and this one's called chameleon plant. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not all, not all plants in the plant zoo are, you know, accommodating and tidy, and this is one that isn't. Um, yeah, it tends to spread. Tends to spread. That's kind of the understatement. Tends to spread, wink, wink. Okay? Um, it's a fun one though, because look at all the colors in the leaves. So it doesn't change colors like a chameleon. Here's a picture of a, of a chameleon. Um, but it does, yeah, it's got a little flower as well. What I want you to do, I'm not always nice either. Wink, wink. It, it's, a, it's a very pugnant smell, very pungent smell. Um, I tell my students that if someone faints, 
this is what you put underneath the nose <laughs> to wake Rebecca. There you go. So yes, yes. They they think it ta uh, smells like uh, very citrusy, very clean, but laced with diesel fuel <laughs> or alcohol. Yeah. So something along those. That does very well as a water plant. It does. In fact, you if you're going to grow this one, chameleon plant, um, it'll grow almost anywhere. Does really well in heavy clay soils. Likes it as a ground cover in some shade, but the best place is in a container in, in a water garden because it can't spread. So, and it and you have these beautiful foliage and flowers, and and it only spreads by roots and rhizomes, so it's not reseeding everywhere. So that's how you want to use chameleon plants. Yeah, that's a, it's tall because it's growing in and amongst other things. Um, you'll see it's sold, and it's much much shorter okay. yeah this one's a creeper too so yeah but do you have that in your garden um i don't i got this one from your garden <laughs> i do not have that one in my garden on purpose up by the sidewalk yes it is and it, it you know and ryman gardens has the same uh thing it's one that was planted many years ago they attempted to remove it but it still kind of appears here and there um it's manageable but it's, it does require some time. But yeah, it's a fun one. Um, another kind of ground cover to think about, um, and I bet you have this somewhere as well. I'm not familiar with that. Um, this is artemisia or oh, wormwood. Sure. There's, there's some down there. Yeah. yeah, and you have some taller artemisia yes. over here that's yeah. competing with the uh, chameleon plant. Um, and I don't know who's going to win uh, that battle. Um, this is a silver mound artemisia. It's called wormwood. So sometimes plants in the plants zoo um, or garden zoo get their name because of what they do. Um, this one doesn't get its name because it looks anything like a worm um, or any kinds of worms, and it doesn't attract worms. What it was actually used for at one time was this kind of an insecticide or an insect repellent. So it was placed and scattered in different places to kind of keep worms out. And Artemisia, um, there's a species of Artemisia that's absent as well, that is used as a medicinal to, or poison, depending on dosage, yeah, um, as well. So it's, it's interesting how that, that whole genus gets its name of wormwood and how it was used in kind of repelling certain insects. And that's the same with bugbane which is another one in here. Have you seen this one, Actea or Simicifuga? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think they've got some in the reptile garden. Yes. Okay. Yep. No. It's also called black cohash is another uh, common name or black snake root. Yes. My, my favorite name though is, huh? It's called uh, fairy candles is another. Yeah, it's a sweet one, isn't it? Um, this is a much better. Um, it usually the top two or three feet are these really open flowers that look good in bud and then look great when they're open as well. Attract a lot of butterflies, um, bees, and will tolerate some shade. And it's another really long-lived perennial. So this is one you need to, to consider. Has big leaves like the uh, goat's beard. Reverse root system once again. Yes. So, um, but worthy having because it's generally long-lived too. Miscanthus is a warm season grass um, that is a little slow to emerge in the spring. So something else to remember on this particular uh, species. But I love that one because of the, the zebra-like striping. All right. And I know this one I got from you. What is this one? Rattlesnake Master. Now how did this one get its name? It does. It does rattle uh, when the seeds dry on the, the inside. I don't have, I don't know if that means it, it sounded like a rattlesnake at some point, but um, it definitely um, has this very interesting uh, seed head. This is the flower kind of forming now. Um, this is one of the natives uh, when we talk about a plant zoo. Um, so American native and native to many parts of the prairie. Full sun generally is best. 
good well-drained soils. It's another one like this butterfly weed. Likes to live a little bit on the edge, so make sure it's not too fertile of a soil and doesn't stay too wet. So, um, a good one to have. Um, do you know this one? Virginia? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Pig squeak. Pig squeak. Yeah. Let me see I if I can. Why I got that name. You know, you know, oh, you want to know why it yeah. got that name? That's the fun part. Let me. Mm -hmm. Or white yeah. flower. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to flower in spring. Mine always flowers in fall. Oh. So it never gets it quite right. Mm -hmm. um, it, it flowers really nicely in Europe. Okay. Um, so, but we grow this one for the leaves, and it's called pig squeak because if you rub the leaf, it's supposed to squeak like a pig. Oh, so let's see if it happens. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so play with your plants, right? Um, I like this one too because it has a nice fall color to the leaf as well. Not too many perennials have a fall color. Um, and it's a, it's a good ground cover, so it stays low, likes it part shade, pretty adaptable. It's a good one to have. So see if you can make it squeak like a pig. This so must be a, a real mature plant. Size for five years. I mean, I don't know. It's like a rhizome, isn't it? It is. So it's don't want too deep. No, it's, a, it's, it's fine. And it does, it does have a tendency to, to very slowly spread. And appreciate those ground covers that don't spread too fast. Yeah. So, yeah, the barren wart and the, the pig squeak that I have are not filling in greatly, but yeah, and that's okay. Um, I think I've seen it do really well in a heavy clay soil, and that kind of limits its growth a little bit, but it stays alive. Um, I also think it's certain cultivars do better than others. Um, Cordifolia is the species we normally get, but Crassifolia, if you can find it, I think is a little better. So, something to think about. Okay, a um, couple more. Harebell? You ever heard of Harebell? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's also called Campanula. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. so, um, and it's called Harebell because the, the, the bells are hairy, but it's spelled H A R E. So they're kind of fuzzy, a little bit like a rabbit or a hare. And then it has this bell uh, type flower. Yeah, this is another one. Um, all Campanulas are called hare bells, and there are some species that are fantastic, right? Absolutely wonderful. Um, and then the punctata types tend to be pretty aggressive yes. spreaders. <laughs> this is one of the more aggressive yeah, ones, yes. Um, Roundup hasn't killed this one in my garden yet, oh, so no. working on it, working on it, but it's going to require more than one. Um, it, it does have a pretty flower. It's a beautiful flower. Let it flower, don't let it recede, um, and then kind of <laughs> try and manage it um, as much as possible. Um, another one here, let me show you. going the wrong way. Do you know tick seed? Mm -hmm. So Coreopsis or tick seed. Yeah. I mentioned this one because it usually has a nice yellow daisy type flower. It's fantastic. Usually starts blooming in June. There are some tick seeds that bloom for 12 weeks straight. Um, so like Zagreb and uh, Moonbeam. So they really do thread leaf tick seed. So they, they're there for a long time. Um, it generally likes sun, will tolerate some light shade, um, and a few of the bigger flowering ones, if you deadhead them, then they'll repeat bloom. So a good one to have, very low growing. Here's one that has variegated uh, foliage. It got its name though, because if you look closely at the little bud, it kind of looks like a swollen tick, okay? Which doesn't, doesn't sound very good, but it's a pretty important thing to know. It's not going to attract ticks to your garden. That's the biggest thing when you get the name tick seed going, is that it's going to attract ticks. It doesn't. It just looks like a swollen tick. 
Some of the seed, too, kind of look like a little tick because they're tiny as well. But it's not. It's not a tick at all. Um, I think I'll show you a couple of others. You have some spider flower over there as well. Cleo me. Oh, you can you can break it. It's not a problem. It's gonna die anyway. Annual that we call spider flower because the the um, the pollen or the anthers stick way out beyond the flower itself. So it reminds you of a granddaddy long leg um, spider legs. Um, so make sure you look for that. It's a it's a fun one to have. And I like spider flower in the garden uh, because. No deer or rabbit bother it. So there's something for your plant zoo, or your garden zoo, that's not bothered by animals. Yeah. And yeah. is it like full sun? Full sun is best, but part shade, once again, it'll kind of do on the edge. It just gets a little taller and a little floppier. So, How yeah. tall does it get? <coughs> it depends on the cultivar. There are some that stay really low at about three feet. And then there are others that will get four to five. Okay? So. And it reseeds. Yeah, and it reseeds with a vengeance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, or you can collect the seeds. So the seeds will be forming below this flower, and you can collect them, put them in a Tupperware container, they'll explode, and then you can decide where you want it to reseed next year, which is the trick, okay? Because it makes a good deer fencing <coughs> for some things as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put it anywhere. Um, here's another one, and I, I started this PowerPoint because I was going to show you things that weren't flowering yet. Um, and this is one called Toad Lily. Okay. So this is a good one for shade, for those of you that have shade. Um, I love the leaf and see how it circles the stem. Um, that's kind of cool. At each one of these nodes near the, the top of the stem, a flower stem will emerge. And I'll pass that around. Mine blooms right before frost. Yeah, they usually bloom in October, guys. So we're September and October. So it is the last thing to bloom. And here's one of the blooms. It's called toad lily, and they're tin, tiny little orchid-like flowers. Yep, yep, and it uh, it's called toad lily because it's spotted, okay? The flowers don't look like a toad, but they're spotted like a toad, um, so it gets the name toad lily. I have a question about Come up like an iris. Yes. Just different varieties? Different varieties, so they can look a little different. Some will spread, some stay in this perfect little clump. So different varieties, different species, yeah. You probably have the hertz type that spreads just a little bit. And that's okay, because it's not, it's not a chameleon plant or, yeah, one of the other really vigorous spreaders. Yeah. I have a question about the spider plant. The spider plant? And I'm more of a vegetable grower than a plant grower or flowers. Mm -hmm. But we're always trying to find things that will keep critters out of our vegetable garden. Um, I mean, marigolds and some other stuff. Sure. I'm wondering I, if that would be. It would be. Or. It would be good, at, maybe at the rabbits. You know, yeah. to some extent. Um, I think when I talk to Adam Jenke or someone else at Iowa State who deal with wildlife, they always say it always depends yeah. um, on how They're hungry, hungry right, yeah. the rabbit is. Yeah. Because they'll well, nibble at something or find a way in. I grew peas in containers this year, and yeah. the rabbits made a nest out of them. <laughs> yeah, so and, and a, a lot of things were hungry this year, so because everything was really late. So, yeah. Okay. Um, here's another one that's a real late bloomer that likes the shade as well. This is called Turtle Head. Doesn't look like anything from uh, the leaf, just this opposite leaf. Know that it's not fuzzy like the toad lily. The flower, which usually starts in August or September, is pink. It looks like a weed. Yeah, it does kind of look like a weed. Um, but it's got this pink uh, flower, can be white, um, and it looks like a turtle's head poking out of the shell, if a turtle could be pink. 
okay, because it's usually very pink. So I think people who named some of these plants took a lot of artistic license uh, when they gave them some of the common names. I like um, turtle head because it will tolerate really moist soils near a ditch or drainage and still bloom really well Heavy for you. Clay. <laughs> Heavy clay is not a problem um, at all. And it will, if it gets a lot of moisture, it will tolerate full sun. Um, and then actually does pretty well in part shade if it's not. So pretty dependable uh, perennial. About three to four feet tall though. So plan on it's a bigger one somewhere in your garden. Uh, let's see, and then there was a few others that I know you have. Elephant ear, okay. It got its name because it has really large leaves that are kind of arrowhead. Nothing like an elephant, by the way, if you look at an, an elephant's ear. But it looks like a big ear, like an elephant. Um, uh, mine are real small this year, late, late because it's yeah. cold. They cold. like it hot. They like it hot yes. and wet. Right, and now that it's getting hot, it's not getting wet. Right. So it's, that's not the best combination for them. They do really well in a really wet summer. Um, coming from Louisiana, elephant ears, um, you can leave them outside over the winter, and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. This summer might be better for hens and chicks. Okay, um, so you all know hens and chicks. The hen is in the center, the chicks are around the outside. Once the hen blooms, usually she dies, and then the chicks kind of take over. Um, which is hard to explain to kids because this looks nothing like a hen or a chick. It's just that association of hens and chicks. Another common, and then it also reminds me that other, these plants have other common names as well. Um, this is called Sempervirum. Um, it's also called a house leak because it was used to plug places in sod roofs that leaked. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So some weird ones. <laughs> Cardinal flower. I see you have this one in the, yeah. the uh, garden, the plant zoo as well. Yeah. It's only named Cardinal flower because it's Cardinal red. Okay, <laughs> like a cardinal, and it blooms in summer likes it shady and this one's pretty insistent on good soils fertile soils that stay moist this is also another one that i see working really well in rain gardens on the edge that you know gets that regular kind of moisture um cranesbill also called geranium this is the real geranium not the pelargonium the annual um, it gets its name not from the flower, but from the seed head that look really long like a crane's bill. And then there's bloody crane's bill, which my son found out about, and he thought that was the best ever, right? Because it was a violent crane's bill, right? And I had to tell him, no, it's called bloody crane's bill because the foliage turns red in the fall, a bloody red in the fall, and it's still just the same crane's bill, okay? animal as well. So this is the comb and the wattle, right? And this <coughs> flower has that kind of shape like a cock's comb, okay? Or a rooster, which cock is another name for rooster. Kind of interesting. And then bee balm. You've seen that one here as well. I saw a few of those here too. I asked kids if bees need lotion because balm often means lotion. Do they? Yeah. Maybe. Pollen, lotion, they get it on their legs, sure. No, it's, it's called bee balm too because it often is used in like lotions and creams and scents. And I had uh, Earl Grey tea uh, this morning and that comes from the leaves and flowers of bee balm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or bergamot. Mm -hmm. is a type of bee balm. So, yeah. When that dies off, can you cut the mom and they'll rebloom? They sometimes will sporadically rebloom um, if you take them off. Um, you're not going to get that in, that big bloom that you did before. So, unfortunately. Did the Indians use that for medicinal purposes? I think, I think it's been used in teas for a long time. Um, 
I have to be careful when we talk about the medicinal purposes of different things because Native Americans used a lot of things um, and we still have a lot of things that we say could be used for medicinal purposes but sometimes those medicinal purposes were to make you throw up or pee or yeah yeah so they're maybe not what we would consider as medicinal now okay and a lot of those um, haven't been proven some of those haven't been proven and I say that because sometimes common names were derived on how that plant looked like a part of the body as well does anyone have lungwort in their garden pulmonaria so it's got its name from looking like the shape of a lung and lungwort looked like a diseased lung so the Greeks thought it would cure pulmonary conditions and it does not okay it will make you sick so yeah so it's all that was my disclaimer okay I'm sticking to it um and I should because I don't want you going out eating all of this stuff, uh, just in case. Couple others, even houseplants get names yeah, based on plant. Snake, snake, plant. snake plant, or mother-in-law's mother tongue, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Sansevieria. It's called snake plant because it has a pattern like a snake, right? Um, and it's long and kind of narrow. It's also called mother-in-law's tongue because it's long and sharp. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Um, you should be careful uh, with what dogs and cats nibble on. Uh, we don't have a really good list on what's poisonous or toxic for people, let alone pets. Um, yeah, so be, be careful. I, I tell people that when, when I have an animal chewing on a plant they want some attention well, right if he gets mm. sick don't let him do it <laughs> <laughs> if he gets sick don't let him do it that's a good that's a good one um i just got a puppy though so i've always had cats and they would nibble on things just for attention or knock over a house plant to get attention the puppy's a little different he nibbles on everything he's like a toddler mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah he would put anything in every. He tried to put the deck in his mouth the other day, so trying to take take on a piece of two by four. So yeah, yeah. Why not? So that brings me to dogwood, which is another uh, plant zoo plant. How do you think this one got its name? <laughs> Maybe it's because dogs do like to eat or chew on wood or sticks. We have no idea. We have absolutely no idea how this one got its name. Um, it's kind of a weird one. So it's just one of those common names that stuck. And there's no resemblance to dogs in any part of it, flower or leaf. So. Are you um, Cornus? Yeah. I don't know. Or. This one does kind of look like a little bit like a spider's legs, but I've never seen warts on a spider. So, <laughs> and then the pretty.
Bushes that have 